I was in Poundland today and I noticed they'd got their Halloween stock in, not much Halloween stock. I don't know if this is just last year's or they've got some new stuff in, but they'd put it out on display. The place has been very sort of empty this year because of new stock, because uh, of the Covid thing and also because of the Brexit shenanigans, all the politics with trucking and stuff like that. But these are a set of 100 LED string lights I got. Uh, they had a choice of cold white or orange LEDs. It's a shame they don't have the purple ones. They were just fantastic. They usually do, but a smaller set. It'd be nice if they did the purple ones in a really big set like this, which is 100 LEDs. So it's designed to take uh, three AA cells. Is there a resistor? in here, or is there some circuitry? Is there a timer? Let's see if we can get this off. Oh, that is not coming off easily. They glued this on. Oh, no, it's off. Uh, there is no resistor or timer. It just is a little on-off switch. Okay, right. I shall power these from my bench power supply. Actually, I'll put the meter on. We can actually measure uh, what voltage they light up. I'm surprised they've not got a resistor with three double A's because that would be 4.5 volts. That's going to push quite a lot of current out. We can test that. We can run it up to 4.5 volts and see what current it is taking. But initially I want to see the voltage here. So I shall stuff the red lead up there. Posh, clever, really sophisticated. And the black lead up here. Currently at 1.57 volts in the power supply. Let's see at what, po what point the light up. This is a point I could actually uh, turn the light off and we could take the exposure off and we can see this together, uh, what sort of level the light up at. So the light is going off. Oh, that's very dark. Uh, right, that wasn't all that clever because, hold on, but uh, it will provide its own illumination. Uh, just starting to glimmer into life at, oh, hold on, I'm going to have to <laughs> screw it up. Uh, hold on. 2.39, that's pretty good. Uh, so they are just starting to glow at uh, just under 4 volts, which is good for running them in nickel metal hydrides because they will last a long time. At 2.5 volts, they're a decent tense. They're up to 5 milliamps. Uh, 2.6 volts, they're up to 30 milliamps. 2.7 volts, they're looking actually pretty bright for normal use. Uh, that suggests that, you know, running them off a couple of double A's would be better, but that's 88 milliamps. Now I'm at 123 milliamps, 2.8 volts. Um, yeah, and it's starting to swamp out a bit. Right, tell you what, I'm going to bring the light back. One moment, please. The light is back. Uh, okay, so let's continue now. You can actually see them against the studio lighting. So at 3 volts, that would be two double A's, but that's not two double A's. The current draw is 290 milliamps. If I turn it up to 3.6 volts, which would be a set of nickel metal hydride cells, that is at 829 milliamps. That's quite a lot. Um, as I turn it up, I've set this limit, to the, cut the limit at 4 volts. This is going to absolutely... Yeah, this is going to... Using the 3 double A's seems a bad idea. But anyway, that doesn't really matter because, to be honest, this is just a way, great way of getting these strings of LED lights and ultimately you and me can modify stuff, we can actually hack stuff. This is something that would lend itself well to being modified to USB power just by adding, say, a 10 ohm resistor in series with each lead and uh, just connecting it to a USB lead. I might do that. Right, tell you what, I'm going to do that. One moment, please. And begin the hack. So, uh, typical little USB lead you get with random products. I'm going to cut the end of it off and I'm going to strip it. It's probably got super thin wires in it. I think this was, is the type that just has the positive and negative. That's even better. Is it going to strip with that one? No. Is it going to strip this one? Is it going to strip everything off? No, that's it. It's got the two wires, red and black. Doesn't necessarily mean they are red and black, but we'll find out and put it together. I could test this. I shall just uh, strip a little bit like that. A little bit like that, the insulation stretches and then retracts back. Once it's heated up, it should actually, with the solder, it should actually retract a bit further out of the way. 
It's not very good. It's it's very chewy. It's not ideal for stripping. That's okay. It's fine. We shall resolve that issue. So I'm going to twist those together. I'm going to get a little bit of solder and I'm going to tin them. I could zoom down for this. It probably would be better to zoom down for this because I am kind of far away. I've got the helping hands here. This is also good. I should get this black thing out of the way, the black battery holder. So I'm putting a little bit of solder on this. The wires are very thin, but this isn't uncommon. They save money by using super thin wire. It also kind of limits the current to the device being charged to a degree. Right, tell you what. You could either mark the wires by working out which is positive to this end, which is negative to this end, but I'm just going to chop them. Chop them and then strip them, and I'll show you how to identify the polarity. So I'm going to use this little generic wire stripper. Draper brand wire stripper. Very common type. People ask why don't I use the universal automatic wire strippers, and the answer is with some of these wires, that just the automatic wire strippers actually damage the wires. So now that I don't know which polarity these wires are, I'm actually going to get a little lithium button cell, which is about 3 volts, dab it on, nothing lights, dab it on the other way around. Nothing lights, because uh, this uh, actually that did light, but this is a flat cell. Let me see if I can get a, a better cell. Maybe I should get rid of the flat cells. Yeah, it's making them glow. You may not see that, but it is making them glow. That is the correct polarity. So the one with the big flat cell for the plus in it is the positive. So I shall actually just use a sharpie. Since it's black wire, I'm just going to colour the copper. It's going to, it'll come off when I start uh, soldering it anyway. Resistors. I'm using two quarter watt 10 ohm resistors, which are ample for this. Batteries out of the way. So I'll crop these down to about just over an eighth of an inch, about three millimetres. And then I shall put one into here and I shall pre-tin it with some solder. And then I shall get one of these leads and I shall solder it on. I've pre-tinned these as well, so I'm just really just flowing them together again. Flowing fresh solder on be handy, but there is a limit to what you can do with two hands. I shall do the same with the other resistor. This is quite a nice modification because it means you can just run the LEDs guilt-free. You don't have to worry about batteries. They'll always be the same intensity. If you really uh, get through a lot of lights, you can also make it up a little adapt to these resistors and connectors and you can just plug in whatever lights you want and it means you can change them very easily. So now I'm going to sort of the positively down here. I'm saying positive, you just never know. Sometimes the Chinese manufacturers make red negative and black positive. They just sometimes do that. I'm not sure why they do it. I guess ultimately the people in the factories aren't necessarily super duper technical. So as you crop these down, now before soldering these on, I'm going to uh, put a bit of heat shrink over them so I can put it, pull it back over the resistors. So I shall cut this convenient bit that I've looked out in half and I shall slide it over before tinning these wires and sticking them onto those resistors. And that will be it. We can plug it straight in and see what happens. I could check polarity of that lead, but I won't. I'm going to take a chance that it might actually be right this time. So let's clamp the positive lead resistor here, and I shall tin the lead with the red sharpie on it, which is the positive, and flow it on. Don't worry if you forget to put the heat shrink on before soldering. Uh, you're not the first to do that. It happens a lot. Worse when you're dealing with huge multi-pin connectors. It can be just fatiguing when you you get to the end of a job and you're just about to put that connector lid on. You realise that the bit that was supposed to be on already isn't. And now you have to basically remove all the wires and start from scratch. That is a demoralising experience. But something most technicians have experienced at some point. And if you get involved in doing technical stuff, you too will experience the trauma of that one day. Hopefully it won't be a huge mega multi-core. That's the, the more connections, the more time it takes, the, the worse it is when you do that. Now comes the negative connection. And before I put the heat shrink across, I am actually going to test this. I'm going to plug it into a USB power bank 
I've just spotted one. A little cheapy, a strangely and iconically a Poundlandy style one. In pink. Right, will it work? And what sort of current will it be? So I'll make sure I don't short these resistors together. I shall just plug this in and hopefully the LEDs will light. The LEDs have lit. Nice. That's excellent. Now I shall put the heat shrink down over the resistors. And this is where you could use a heat pen, as I'm going to use. Part of my soldering station. Or if it's all you've got, yes. Some people do use a lighter. Or some other source of hot air. Uh, just to shrink this uh, heat shrink sleeving down. Heat shrink sleeving is really useful stuff. It provides a nice finish to things as well as insulating them. That looks neat. I wonder what current it's drawing. Uh, do I have a little current analyzer? I, I do, but it's not through here. One moment, please. I have fetched it. Resume the video. Something worth mentioning, if you want an extra sort of rigidity or ruggedness, you can actually put another bit of wider heat shrink sleeving, uh, put it over this part first and then slide it back and cover both those connections. It just makes it super rugged and neat. Ideal if it's going to see a lot of use, like say for instance, lights on the table at a party. I shall plug my little Ruadang power meter into this. What's it going to be? Uh, we could try calculating it first. Uh, it's dropping 2 volts, 20 milliamps, 100 milliamps, uh, 20 ohms, 100 milliamps-ish. 114 milliamps. That's perfect. That's going to good. Well, that's going to give a good long life because that's roughly just over about one milliamp per LED, and that's a nice intensity. That's pretty good, and you'll get a very long runtime even off a small power bank like this. Um, anything else worth mentioning here? You also, once you've hacked it like that, you do get to keep your uh, your little uh, battery holder. So that's a little bonus extra thing. So yes, the Poundland lights, good donor lights. It's a really nice colour. It's a really soft, um, tangerineish orange. It's got, almost got a pinkish tinge to the orange. It's, because it's phosphor, it's much richer than the traditional orange ones. And with this modification, uh, just running it off a plug-in power supply or power banks, uh, and at 100 milliamps, it's going to keep even big power banks awake, most likely, which is good. Uh, running them off these, you can just basically leave them on for as long as you want because the power consumption is effectively 5 volts, 100 milliamps, say half a watt for the whole lot. That's uh, really nothing. It's a negligible amount. But there we go. Uh, the synopsis here, the summary is that the Poundland lights, I wouldn't actually use them with this battery pack because it's going to overdrive them. But if you do that little hack with two quarter watt 10 ohm resistors and an old USB lead salvaged from some other product that or just bought from Poundland, then you can uh, basically make yourself a decent set of uh, of lights that can just be left on all the time. And they're a nice colour. They're pretty good. So actually worth it. Just for the LEDs, they were also pretty well matched, um, which is nice because it means that one's not hogging the current. So that's a good result.